Equalizer 3 was a movie that reignited my excitement for the Equalizer franchise because I really enjoyed the first one. My dad and I have this unnatural love for the Denzel Washington and Anton Fuqua combination. So we really enjoyed the first movie, but we never saw the second one. But then when the trailer for the third one came out, we're going, you know what? I'm actually pretty excited to see this. So I finally saw it, but the question still remains, does Equalizer 3 suck? Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. I really do appreciate it. And on this channel, I just want to cut through all the BS of toxic fandoms and gatekeeping and just needless politics and agenda and just tell you guys honestly what my honest thoughts were of the movie, if it sucked or if it's actually worth a watch, in my own opinion, of course. But let me know your guys' opinion down in the comment section down below. Did you guys love this movie? Are you guys excited to see it? Do you guys like the second one more, the first one more? Whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down below. Now... Let's get started. So Antoine Fuqua is our director, and he has done many films with Denzel Washington, Training Day being one of my favorite movies of all time. If you guys have not seen Training Day, go watch that after watching this review. And Denzel Washington is back as the main character, Roberto. And in this one, he is semi-retired in Sicily, Italy. And he's realizing, you know what? This is probably the place where he is meant to be. He's really becoming part of the community. And then the mafia shows up. So of course, he has to equalize the mafia. So what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, I gotta say this first. I saw the second movie for the very first time on the Monday, and then I saw the Equalizer 3 movie on the Wednesday. The second movie really suffered from just some of the worst pacing I've ever seen in an action film. Denzel Washington is great as always, but the pacing in that movie really held it back from being a really enjoyable action film. Or just a semi-enjoyable one, right? This movie though, I think has just some of the best pacing I've seen all summer, really. It's just, there's no room for dull moments at all. There's not a dull moment in this movie. Every single scene feels important, goes on to the next one, doesn't drag, doesn't rush. And when it's over, I'm like, yeah, that's the perfect length for a movie like this. Doesn't overstay its welcome. Doesn't just come in and just say goodbye way too early, right? It's the perfect length, the perfect pacing. And the thing is, I was enjoying myself throughout the entire thing. And that's the thing, right? Like it's such a basic want for a movie. Oh, you wanna be entertained from beginning, middle to end and not be bored in the middle. This movie did that. And <laughs> that's the thing. Some movies just, no matter how many millions of dollars they spend on it, that's the thing. Sometimes it can't do that. So yes, the pacing was awesome in this movie, but I also wanted to talk about the action sequences. There are not many in this movie, but they do stand out. They're very minimal but they have that lasting effect because they're used sparingly. When the action scenes do happen, they are very, very grotesque, over the top, and very violent. And I like that. It really does fit the Equalizer story going, yep, this guy will f you up no matter who you are and you don't stand a f***ing chance. And I don't know if I have a term for this or if there's like a term that people will use. I use it as like the dad wincing right? So let's just say someone like gets killed in a really grotesque way and then the dads in the audience go, oh, <laughs> and it, they're like kind of laughing at it. That is the equalizer type of violence. And it's just done perfectly here. I was doing that in this theater. Like I was with one of my buddies and he's just going, oh, damn. If you're into that, then this movie's for you. But there's not much of it. That's the thing. It doesn't feel like these action sequences are in here just for the sake of action sequences, like the Expendables or, you know, kind of those type of action movies, right? It really does feel like these action sequences and the fights and the violence really do service the story, which is great. Again, like, this movie's not reinventing the wheel. It's nothing fantastic. It's just solid. And it's just basic, well done. Now, this review would not be complete without talking about Denzel Washington himself. He's one of my favorite actors, really. And this is like the role, I don't want to say this is the role he's born to play because that term has been thrown around so much, but I do think that he has really made this role his own. And he might not be the most realistic character when you, you know, write down all of his characteristics, but he feels real. He brings that realism and that believability to it. Like, think about it. Roberto is a very kind and nurturing person. Everybody who he comes into contact with, who isn't a bad guy, ends up really having a good relationship with him. He's so nice, and you can tell that he genuinely cares about people, but he's very quick-witted, and he's very funny, and he always knows what to say. And that's another thing, too, that if a character knows how to, you know, win a battle of wits every single time, then it's very endearing. 
I always like seeing characters like that. There's tons of charm there, tons of charisma, tons of screen presence. Like, he steals every single scene that he's in. And, you know, it's funny, I don't even think he's the one who really steals the movie either. We'll get into the villains later. So not only is he this kind, nurturing person, but he's very quick-witted, but he's also just a badass and very capable and very smart. I love seeing characters who are just really fantastic at their craft. You can tell that this guy has seen some things. He is extremely intelligent and he knows exactly what to do. So yes, he does feel like this superhero in a sense. And I think they even talked about that in the second one, how there's like a superhero-like quality to him where he's not really looking for the recognition. He's just kind of in the background doing the right thing for the people. And he is like that savior, like that guardian angel-like complex. And I've always liked characters like that. He is a hero. He is a heroic character and he is very good in this movie. And that's the thing, even though the second movie, and again, I'm not trying to just throw that movie under the bus, although I feel like it deserves it for quite a lot of it. He is so good in that role that that's the only reason why that movie is enjoyable. The first one I thought was just a fantastic movie altogether, but even in all of them, he is just so heroic. He's so kind. He's so nurturing. He's so quick-witted. He's so badass. He's a great character to watch on screen. But a character in its own right is the location in this movie. Sicily, Italy. I've never been to Italy, but sometimes when you watch a movie, and let me know if you guys have had this before, you just feel like you have to buy a ticket to go there. Braveheart had this effect on me, by the way. After seeing Braveheart for the first time in like 10 years, the next day I bought a ticket to Scotland. I didn't buy a ticket to Italy after watching this movie, but it's on the bucket list and it's, you know, rising the ranks of priority. So not only does it look beautiful, but the town itself, is a character in this movie. Our character, Roberto, the Equalizer, has seen some serious stuff, and you can tell that he is traumatized, and he's at the end of the line. He's going like, I don't know how much I can take this. Am I a bad person? What do you see when you look at me? You do hear that line again. Of course, he said that in the first movie, but you really do get a sense of the town. You do feel like you're a part of this community, and you understand that that is really the allegory of inner peace amongst Roberto. So, of course, when that inner peace finally that one sense of hope that one final silver lining on his life because he doesn't have anybody left when that way of life is threatened by these assholes in the mafia these mafia people are not deep characters they're not complex characters but you hate them you love our hero you hate our villain simple the emotional investment is there on a very bare bones level but it's there and honestly i'd watch a movie with a terrible script that's convoluted and doesn't make any sense but if the emotional investment and the characters are done right, those are the most important things to me anyway. There's a great scene in this movie and not really a spoiler, but he's trying to walk up these really steep steps and he's got a cane because he's trying to recover from a wound, okay? And there's this old lady walking down the steps and she goes, walk slowly. So he kind of has like a double take and looks at her and goes, okay, yes. And that's the thing, a life of, you know, fighting crime and taking down bad guys. Now it's time to just mellow out. That, that really did feel powerful. And that way of life is being threatened by the mafia. And these guys, you see them just do the worst imaginable things. Sure, they can be a bit cartoonish. Yes, there's nothing new to these bad guys. But you hate them. The movie makes you hate the villains. And that's the most important things. They reminded me of the villains in Rambo Last Blood. I don't remember anything about those villains. Except for they did terrible things. And I hated them. Thus, I wanted Rambo to succeed. We want Roberto to succeed. And overall, it's just a solid movie. Nothing fantastic in it. I've seen better action sequences in Equalizer movies. I've seen better stories and more tight stories in other Equalizer movies. I've seen better action thrillers before, but this is a solid one and I can't complain. So overall, I'm giving this movie a three out of five. I wanted to give it up to a four, but again, I feel like those ones should be reserved for like those really special movies. But this one got close. If I give it like a 3.5, I would feel like that would be, you know, more manageable. But because then you got to do 0.4 and 0.7, it's like you got to quantify it all. And it just, I liked the movie. It's a good movie. If you're a fan of Denzel Washington or if you're a fan of the Equalizer franchise, Give this movie a watch. And there you have it, guys. Those are my thoughts on Equalizer 3. If you guys like this video and you want to see more videos just like it, then definitely hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate all the support. But if you also want to support the channel on a more deep level, then Patreon is down below in the description. But regardless, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.
Take care.